Whenever someone dies, it's important for those left behind to remain hopeful. And sooner or later, death touches all of our lives. But this hope, for it to be a true comfort, must be based on truth. What hope do the friends and family of Mr. Max Martinez have today? What evidence do we find in his life to hope for his eternal salvation? He was polite and respectful to others. Why is this important, and why is it disappearing from our world? It's important because, as Catholics, we are to treat others as we wish to be treated. But more importantly, we are to see God in others. So we see others are not always perfect, and how can we respect them? We have to have a deeper, stronger faith, enough to see God in others, despite whatever else may be there. But not only see God in others, but try to encourage them to show that image of God in their souls. What happens when you disrespect someone? They become hostile and defensive, naturally. It can even have a hardening effect on the person toward you. But when you respect someone, the natural response is a softening effect in a more open and amiable soul. But most importantly, we see God taking the respect or disrespect in a very personal way, especially when directed to those who hold his place in our lives. And this is important for both those in and under authority, those around us, those under us, and those above us alike. If we wish to follow God's plan, his holy will, we must do our part and not judge others, but only ourselves. And when we see what we lack before God, this will help us greatly to come to humility and respect of his holy image in ourselves and in others. And why is this important? This respectful attitude carries over into our very soul, our relation with God. We are told God cannot resist the prayers of the humble, but he firmly resists the proud. The respectful attitude engenders humility, and this humility helps us to see our own weakness. And we can see this in Maximo's life, who was raised in an orphanage, and some might think, how sad. In a certain way, yes, that's true. But what was the advantage for him? He learned respect, and in this turn, in turn led him to humility and seeing his own weakness and to need someone he would turn to God for help frequently throughout his life. And I remember this also when I would take him Holy Communion. They would ask God for help. And I remember, I remember this about him. Now, as Catholics, we understand it's important for us to understand our weakness and the need we have for help. And instinctively, Max understood this, and he turned to the Holy Rosary. Yes, he loved the rosary, so let us allow his life to bear fruit in our souls. Let us grow in our love for the Holy Rosary. And what is the rosary about? How can it help us? It is about the mysteries of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So many rich lessons and virtues. It is a powerful antidote to sin. It consoles us greatly to unite our sufferings with Christ and his Holy Mother in the Sorrowful Mysteries. It strengthens us to see the hope and triumph of the Glorious Mysteries. We know after the Mass and the Divine Office, the Rosary is the most powerful of all prayers when prayed well, to the best of our ability. Even the devils themselves have been forced to confess the power of the Holy Rosary and how it defeats them. I guarantee you, you will forever bless the day you begin to pray five decades of the rosary and persevere therein. Sometimes that's a challenge. Only in eternity can we appreciate the blessing, that extra effort it takes to keep doing that every day draws down from God into our souls and families. And so will all of those who lead this holy practice by encouragement and example. And it's not just a nice and pious thought. The rosary, if prayed properly, becomes a, a way of life, a vital link to our heavenly home. Indeed, St. Alphonse of Glory calls his rosary, a chain, he called it a chain that bound him to heaven. 
And can there be any doubt? We need the rosary now more than ever. But not just a routine, but a true love of the rosary. A love by which we seek to nourish and guard the precious light of our faith in the darkest night, filled with danger and uncertainty as our world is. Maxima was a quiet man. And a good Catholic, this is a sign of recollection. It is important for all of us to understand the necessity of recollection, being with God in our thoughts. And why are we, perhaps, or why is there the tumult of the world? Because the devil, for many people, can take away what they need. But if he can successfully, successfully distract them, they don't seek what they need. They don't seek to quiet their souls. They become distracted and they pursue things outside of God. And so this has been very successful, unfortunately, for the devil today in disconnecting souls from God. And even those they profess to love by a very distracted and self-centered worldly life. We need to pray to understand the value of recollection to help us to stay connected to God. A vital link. This is the difference between a tepid and a fervent rosary. A tepid and a fervent soul. Can we begin to see why a quiet soul, a recollected soul, is a much stronger soul? Only in silence can God be heard. Let us think of God and thank him for these beautiful lessons we see. Pray for the strength to keep our mind focused on him. See that when the devil puts many distractions and things of the world into our mind, so to speak, the inspirations of God are trodden underfoot. They are not allowed to grow. But is it enough to admire admire these virtues? No. If If they are to help us in our journey to eternity, we must imitate them, make them a part of our lives. So let us pray the daily rosary, asking for the strength to understand and practice Those virtues God wishes wishes and expects of us with the indispensable help of our dear Blessed Mother in these most dark and confusing times. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.